Ooh. Well, welcome back. The Black Chamber of Commerce of Southern Illinois is hosting a special pop-up event for shopping this weekend. And here to tell us more is Chastity Mays and Nancy Maxwell. Good morning, and thank you for joining me. Appreciate it. So tell us about this event and what people can expect. So this is our first event. We are a new venture, and we're going to have black vendors selling their wares at the at Attics Park. Oh, awesome. So um, in terms of participation, is it just so it's just black vendors? Is there room for extra vendors to participate? Uh, yes. It, extra vendors can participate. And also, one of our chamber members is hosting a play out in the park at the same time. So we'll, well, not at the same time. We'll be starting vending, and then we'll stop for the play, and then we'll start again. So it's a two-part event that you can attend. We always like when we can get a little extra, <laughs> especially in these events. So do we know what kind of items we'll feature? It's perfect because we're coming into the holiday seasons where people are going to want to be looking for Christmas gifts and things like that. So is it homemade items and things like that? So some of it will be homemade items. Um, we'll have T-shirts. We'll have also just um, an opportunity for businesses to give information about their um, businesses. So like we'll have a business that offers doula services to pregnant mothers. We'll have um, just t-shirts, um, soaps that people make. So all different types of items people can expect. And how long will the event run from? So it'll be from 1 to 6 at Attics Park and the address is 800 North Wall Street. Okay. And like you had said, that other vendors can participate. So where should they go to say, hey, I want to be a part of this. I want to sell my items. Okay, so it's $25 a table. And uh, they can just call the number on the flyer. Or they can show up and we do have Cash App and they can pay right there at the event. Awesome. Well, if you are in a shopping mood and you know you got to get those Christmas gifts early this year, make sure you check out this vendor fair, this fall pop-up shop. But, hey, Dave... I want you and Nick to be thinking about some Christmas gifts for me. Uh, what? <laughs> Let's at least start seeing some cooler weather before we start talking about Christmas. Uh, that has not been the case thus far here in the month of October. Uh, tracking some showers and storms overnight. Uh, quite, a, quite a loud night for many into southern Illinois, especially through uh, parts of Williamson and Franklin, Jefferson County. Some areas picking up more than an inch of rain. Most of the heavy rain now exiting to our north. We're still tracking a couple showers from time to time. You'll see a few of those downpours now to our north. So don't be surprised if you see a couple raindrops this morning. Today is not a wild wash out by any means. We're going to see quite a bit of dry time, but uh, especially during the heat of the day, we'll likely see a few more showers and storms develop. These will be very hit and miss, not anticipating any severe weather, but some thunder, some lightning, a brief heavy downpour possible this afternoon. Now looking ahead to Friday, the rain clears out of here. Temperatures starting to climb, not at all feeling like October this weekend, near record warm temperatures by Saturday and Sunday. Live view from Mount Vernon this morning, looking over the interstate, that's I-57 and I-64. There's some of the low clouds. We've seen a couple showers move through there here recently as well. 67 degrees right now. Look at those dew points still in the upper 60s. For this time of year, that is some very, very high humidity. So we have just not seen that break from that summer-like air mass quite yet. Very uh, slow-moving storm system camped over top of us right now, slowly starting to work its way to the north. And with it, it's taking some of the heavier rain back into parts of central Illinois and back into northern Indiana this morning. That continues to work away from us over the next 24 hours. And then by Friday afternoon, it's out of here. And some very warm weather set to arrive towards the end of the weekend into the weekend. Again, this afternoon, just a few little pop up showers developing during the heat of the day. Winds today will be out of the south and west. The temperatures running up to about 76, 70 degrees or 77 degrees this afternoon. Anything that does develop tonight should fade away pretty quickly. We are drying out by Friday morning. Temperatures dipping back into the upper 50s. And then a lot of sunshine expected on Friday afternoon. Temperatures back into the lower 80s, well above average for this time of year. Average high temperature, 74 degrees. Even with the clouds around today, we're still going to be above average. Tomorrow, 81, 85 on Saturday, 86 on Sunday. These temperatures within 5 degrees of the record highs, more than 10 degrees above average. Cooling down a few degrees into the early part of next week. That's actually our next rain chance showing up in the forecast. Make sure you've got that Storm Track 3 app. Make sure you've got the alerts there turned on so you can get alerted to any wet weather out there this afternoon. Some sunshine possible on Friday, Saturday,
Saturday and Sunday. I added a small chance for maybe an isolated shower or two Saturday morning. I'll cancel your plans over that. It's a very small chance. Temperatures though very warm for this time of year. A few more scattered showers and storms in the forecast towards early next week. Temperatures still though not falling back much. High temperatures into the lower 80s through next Wednesday. Finally, maybe uh, adding into the uh, three extra days, bringing it to a 10 day forecast. We'll drop back into the lower 70s by the end of next week. Finally tracking a little bit of fall like weather out there, but it's still a little ways away. <laughs> I feel like this is still August weather. Oh, it really feels like it. I just said you it's know, nice though. fall doing its best it. summer impression. Yes, so. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Appreciate that, Nick. Well, former lawyer Alex Murdoch may face new charges. We'll tell you why after the break. Unfortunately, until they have an income, the shelters, along with COVID, um, had to decrease the amount of people that we can have in our local shelters. And so that puts a lot of people on the street and keeps a lot of people on the streets. It is 624 and Alex Murdaugh, whose wife and son were murdered in June, is now accused of masterminding a scheme to steal a multi-million dollar wrongful death settlement from the family of his former housekeeper. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has the details in today's GMA First Look.
News 3 WSIL. Here's what's happening right now. Good Thursday morning, tracking wet weather overnight. I'll tell you if the rain impacts your day coming up. Making news headlines, a local law enforcement agency is collecting drugs for a take back event. And we hear from an economic expert who tells us the impact of not raising the U.S. debt ceiling and what it will do to your wallet. And I'm live in Harrisburg where they're scooping up something scary. We've got you covered from WSIL. This is News 3 This Morning. Well, good morning, and thank you so much for being with us on this Thursday. I'm Evie Allen. And I'm Dave Davis. I'm not sure how Brooke's doing it this morning. I mean, my heart's about jumped out of my chest a handful of times. <laughs> Drawing by Storm Track 3 meteorologist Nick Housen. And Nick, the thunder and lightning about made my heart jump out of my chest Ooh, last night. Yeah, quite a bit of it, especially in the parts of southern Illinois. Some folks not seeing the storms, but I can tell you it woke me up last night. <laughs> yeah. And uh, we've been watching those through the overnight hours. Those now tracking to our north. Still tracking a few showers as well, redeveloping over parts of s southeast Missouri. Uh, we do have a lot a lot of low clouds around some patchy fog in a few spots. Live view in Carbondale this morning. Temperatures are back into the low to mid 60s. Very warm, very muggy for this time of year. Now today we do expect a few hit and miss showers and thunderstorms, mainly during the heat of the afternoon. These are going to be very spotty, so don't cancel your plans over it. I don't think today's a washout. Temperatures today, middle 70s. However, we're continuing to track some very warm weather for the weekend. We'll track it all and time it out coming up. All right, thanks for that, Nick. We begin with national news this morning. Lawmakers in Washington have less than two weeks to craft legislation to raise the nation's debt ceiling. Senate lawmakers appear to be negotiating a bipartisan deal to lift it temporarily. Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell says Republicans would allow an emergency debt limit extension. It would set a fixed amount for the debt ceiling for about two months. Democratic Senator Tammy Baldwin says it's a small victory, but more needs to be done. In terms of a temporary uh, uh, lifting of the debt ceiling through uh, close to the end of this year. We view that as a victory. We view it as a temporary victory, though, with more work to do. And he cannot dictate the process we use in order to do this. Now, if that does happen, this is what we can expect going forward. You can expect to pay more on loans and cars. Also, home mortgage interest rates could climb even higher, and we could see some government programs eliminated. That's according to SIU economics professor Kevin Sylvester, who says it's tough to tell how much rates will increase or what programs will be axed. But he did say this watch or this watch your savings bonds. Sylvester says the yield or the return on the bonds starts skyrocketing when concerns grow on a possible default. Bond yields stay low, maybe bounce around just you know a little bit, but but not too much. It's an indication that at least the people who participate in the bond market think that what's happened in, in past instances will happen here. Sylvester does believe lawmakers will reach a deal before the deadline. The last time the U.S. voted to raise the debt ceiling was in 2011. Since then, they voted to suspend temporary suspensions of the debt limit, the latest which ended in July. Federal officials say an oil spill off the coast of California has, could have been avoided. Crews say a 13-inch tear in a mile-long section of the pipeline has spilled 145,000 gallons of crude oil into the Pacific Ocean. Right now, cleanup is underway. Typically pipelines, if they are in operation, would have would be full of oil and under pressure. And so when you create that opening, uh, you have a release of pressure to the environment. This affects tourism as crews clean up. It'll take weeks to assess the damage to wildlife. Well, the Justice Department is taking another look at the FBI agents accused of mishandling the sexual assault investigation into convicted former USA Gymnastics Dr. Larry Nasser. Now the FBI received harsh criticism for not doing enough to protect young women. Deputy Attorney General Lisa Monaco says new information is prompting the department to re-examine the actions of a few agents who are accused of ignoring claims and altering evidence. I want the survivors to understand how exceptionally seriously we take this issue um, and believe that uh, this deserves a, a thorough um, and full review. The inspector general investigated the FBI's handling of Nasser's case and in its report highlighted the FBI agents failures and recommended they be charged, but the Justice Department chose not to prosecute. Well, due to the ongoing shortage of workers, dozens of cargo ships are clogging two of the biggest ports in the U.S. The U.S. Coast Guard count over 50 ships in those ports and even more drifting out into the Pacific. 
It's due to the amount of American consumers buying with force while supply chains are still trying to recover from the COVID slump. Limited work hours has forced the port of Long Beach to experiment with round the clock operations, but because offloading is delayed and less products are waiting in warehouses, prices are going up instead. We need to have an Amazon state of mind in this industry. And by that, I mean, Amazon changed everything. What this is, is a wake up call for all of us in this industry to realize you can't operate with the model of yesterday. Officials say they don't know how long the supply issue and cargo backup will last, but they expect it to cause problems for the holidays. A federal judge in Texas is blocking the state's new six-week abortion ban. The ruling from U.S. District Judge Robert Pittman allows abortions after the detection of fetal cardiac activity and forbids exceptions in the case of rape or incest. A group of Texas abortion clinics say the procedures will resume for now. The state's the state attorney general's office says it will appeal and it's likely to win in higher courts. Both the region's appellate court and the U.S. Supreme Court have allowed the law to stand previously. The U.S. Department of Justice is opposing the law with a separate lawsuit. Well, Attorney General Merrick Garland is asking the FBI and state attorneys general to get involved in violence against school workers, crimes from threats to assaults, have been on the rise as school boards across the country address controversial issues such as mask mandates and how educators teach about things like race and sexual equality. The National School Board Association referred to these threats as forms of domestic terrorism and hate crimes. Well, October is Domestic Violence Awareness Month, and experts say the isolation of the pandemic has increased the number of victims. Yeah, and there's also, or there is help for people who need it. News 3's Madeline Parker explains. Domestic violence is extremely common. In Illinois, 41.5% of women and 25.9% of men experience intimate partner violence in their lifetimes. For national averages, those percentages are even higher. Men and women will end up both coming up with about 50% prevalence in a lifetime. That means that every other person you see on the street could easily be a survivor. During the pandemic, studies show internationally domestic violence rose when government-issued quarantines went into effect. In those early months of shelter in place, we got a lot of calls, a lot more calls than we were expecting. While the Women's Center in Carbondale did not see a rise in victims seeking shelter, the number of people calling for help increased. Staying in together in their very small groups, it was hard on everyone, but for those in volatile situations, it did escalate things. Illinois statistics show on a typical day, local domestic violence hotlines receive approximately 19,000 phone calls. That is about 13 calls every minute. But for those seeking help, all you need to do is ask. There's so many opportunities to get help. Um, we have our crisis line. Our number is available 24-7. Um, and... Our shelter is open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Domestic Violence Awareness Month, and we have a full list of those on our website at WSILTV.com. One other drug take back event takes place in Marion. That's happening today. Yesterday, State Representative Patrick Winhorse stopped by Harrisburg for a separate take back event. Winhorse set up a collection site on Poplar Street near the First Presbyterian Church. Residents could walk or drive to the location and drop off any unwanted or unused prescription drugs. Winhorse says just one collection of prescription can make a big difference in the environment. The safe disposal of prescription drugs will help reduce uh, misuse of prescription drugs as well as hopefully fight uh, addiction. And the other thing, it's, it's good for the environment and make sure that those chemicals don't get into our water supply. The event began in 2018 and has collected hundreds of pounds of prescription drugs. If you missed out, you can attend another take back today at the Marion Police Department. That starts at 9. Well, some local fire departments got some much needed help. The state fire marshal announced 36 Illinois fire departments will receive more than $316,000 in funding. That includes 10 in our region. The one time grant makes up for not being able to host fundraising events during the pandemic. With the awarding of this grant money, fire departments will now be able to make up for lost revenue and they'll be able to apply that into the most critical areas of their department where they need to, such as um, equipment to operate and other expenses that it normally takes to run the fire department.
We have a full list of recipients on our website. Well, this morning we're giving you a behind the scenes look <laughs> at the Haunted Forest in Harrisburg. The drive through event is the largest fundraiser for Coleman Tri-County Services. Listen, I've got to tell you right now, I'm glad it's drive through I'm not sure I can handle walking through this. What? what Brooke has shown us this morning, it looks pretty scary Stay out there. Stay in your car, so. That's right, Brooke. <laughs> Well, Heavy and Dave, so far this morning we got a chance to see the haunted barn. We got a chance to see the haunted hillbilly village, the nun scene, the graveyard. I mean, I've got to show you guys a really good sneak peek of the haunted forest right here at the Sling County Fairgrounds. But now we've made our way to the grandstands. So this is just one of many scenes. So joining me for one last time this morning is Lisa Knight. Lisa, where are we at now? We are at Jeepers Creepers. It's a big popular movie and it's just a great scene. It'll be one of the first things you see when you come in. And I loved this movie uh, growing up. I know the one scene with the school bus, I think at the very beginning, definitely creeped me out, little Jeepers yeah. Creepers. And you know, again, what time does this all kick off tonight? Because it's tonight through Saturday evening. Yes. It starts at 6.30, it's $10 a car load or $20 a hayride. We've got t-shirts for sale, we've got a concession stand, we've got porta potties and you're going to need those. I kind of hear something crackling around back there. Oh, <laughs> and <laughs> how late will you guys be out here? Because I know sometimes on the weekends, you know, people want to go get some dinner, you know, come out, get in line. Is it a good idea to get it here early? Yes, I think the earlier you get in line, the better. Maybe the wait is a little bit shorter. We've added a Thursday night to hopefully to alleviate some of the long wait time. But uh, we tried to put a car in line at 1030, which will be the last car. So as long as you're in line by 1030, you'll get in. And then really quickly, this all does go to a good cause, the Tryman, the Coleman Tri-County Services, excuse me. Uh, go ahead and fill in viewers on at home about what that's all about. We were founded in 1972 by Evadine Coleman, who saw a great need in this area for some type of a better service for people with disabilities. And through the years, we've just grown into a, really a 20-county area um, community event. All right. Well, again, we are here at the Haunted Forest in Harrisburg. It kicks off tonight. You can also come out Friday or Saturday. It's all for a good cause. And of course, I'll have that information on our website, WSILTV.com, under News 3 this morning. And, Nick, hopefully it will be a good time for families to come on out. Yeah, you know, of course, uh, through the overnight hours last night, uh, dealing with some wet weather this morning, we've still got a couple showers around, uh, expecting maybe a couple hit and miss showers and storms through the afternoon hours as well. So pack along the umbrella. You may want to pack along a hat. We've got some patchy fog in a few spots. Today, uh, weather be giving the weather grade a C, which is a little bit of an improvement maybe over yesterday. So this morning, temperatures into the low to mid 60s this afternoon. Again, a couple hit and miss showers and storms, not a washout, but uh, quite a few clouds around will help keep temperatures at least into the middle 70s today. The mold count still running very high. It has helped uh, with some of the wet weather. The grass and the weeds have come back just a bit. We are tracking some very summer like weather, though, by the weekend. Break it all down coming up. Thank you, Nick. Still to come, the Big Muddy Monster will be making an appearance in our area this weekend. Yes, he'll be at one of the region's biggest craft beer events. After the break, we'll learn more about it in a live interview.
And then, uh, one more time, please. Check one, two, three. Hello, hello, hello. Can you hear me? Awesome. It is 643 and this weekend fans of craft beer, music, and the Big Muddy Monster are all going to gather for a unique event in Murfreesboro. And of course, we have a familiar face here with us, Kevin Huntsberger hey, joining Dave. us to talk more about it. So, Kevin, this is the 11th annual Big yeah. Muddy Monster Brew Fest. For folks that don't know, tell them about it. Well, you know, obviously last year we had to take a break from it, but uh, this year the Big Muddy Monster Brew Fest is back, bigger, better than ever. More cool. than 60 breweries will be represented. Um, We'll have uh, music from a, a local DJ will be provided. The Big Muddy Monster himself will be there. We'll have games, activities, the home brew craft beer contest. We'll announce the winners from that. Um, and there are still tickets available. Uh, the Imperial tickets, though, as soon as we put them on sale, probably within three days, we're sold out. No so kidding. yeah, we, we really, uh, I think people are just wanting to get back out and get active and do some, some fun things in the Big Muddy Monster Brew Fest. Again, like you said, if you're a fan of craft beer, there are going to be breweries from all over Illinois right here at home. You know, yeah. you'll get to introduce yourself to some local craft brews, uh, some newcomers this year that have opened up since the pandemic started. So it's going to be a good time. I'm going to dive into this just a little bit more. I'm going to yeah. go over a little bit, just a little on time there on it. <laughs> it's at Riverside Park in Murfreesboro yes. and this happening Saturday from noon to four. And you've got somewhat of a refined palate when it comes to craft <laughs> beer. Are there any that you're looking forward to that you know that are bringing their beer there? You know, there is a newcomer here in Southern Illinois, Buckwater mm -hmm. uh, Beer Works in uh, right here in uh, Carbondale and uh, they've got several new beers on tap that they've just recently started doing so they'll be out there this year as, as a newcomer and they're also a stop there's going to be buses so if people are uh, concerned about maybe drinking and driving there will be buses set up uh, two of them in Murfreesboro by the post office as well as at the new Holiday Inn and then there are going to be two in Carbondale at Trace Ombres and at Buckwater People can get the bus starting at 10 a.m. and it will continuously loop back and forth all day until the Brewfest ends at 4 o'clock. And just real quick, what's the website? Uh, it is bmmbrewfest.com or Facebook. Okay, so go there right now, get yeah. your tickets in advance, 35 bucks in advance, yep. 45 at the gate. Once again, it's a Saturday from noon to 4 Riverside Park in Murfreesboro. Kevin, thanks so much for coming yeah, on Yeah, absolutely. With us. Thank all you. All right.